In this episode of How to Cut Footage Like a Pro, we're going to take a look at Walter Murch's number one rule of editing, preserving emotion at all costs. Let's take a look. In his book, In the Blink of an Eye, legendary film editor Walter Murch states that what the audience remembers is not the editing, not the camera work, not the performances, and not even the story. It's how they felt. In fact, of all of Murch's six rules of editing, emotion is the only one that should never, ever be broken. That's right, it's even more important than storytelling. By the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say six rules of editing, that was the first video in this series. I'll link it below, you should check it out. Okay, back to the video. When it comes to editing a video, whether it's a feature film or a short film or even a vlog, if you can make the audience feel the way that you want them to feel, then congratulations, you've got a good edit. In fact, if you can get the emotion right in a video, then the audience will most likely forgive or even completely ignore other inconsistencies in the video. So the question is how? How can we preserve emotion in a video? How can we make the audience feel the way that we want them to feel? And to answer that question, let's actually break down one of my own videos. <laughs> Create and Be Happy is a four and a half minute long creative short that I made in celebration of being on YouTube for two years. The concept was simple, I just wanted to tell the story of my creative journey from the first song that I wrote when I was 11 years old all the way up into today. It was a passion project that I honestly didn't expect to go anywhere. I hoped that it would go somewhere, but I didn't really expect it. So when the comments started rolling in, my mind was completely blown. Comment after comment, people were talking about how inspired they were after watching the video and how powerful it was. Some of them even said the video brought them to tears. I mean tears. How does that happen? Now, I'm gonna warn you right off the bat that the answer to that question, while it sounds simple, it actually takes a lot of practice in order to get it right. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is asking yourselves two questions. One, before you sit down to start the edit, and the other one over and over and over again throughout the duration of the project. The first question is, how do I want the audience to feel? And the second question is, how will this cut affect the audience emotionally? Now, I know a lot of you watching this are YouTubers or independent filmmakers, people who both film and edit their videos like I do. So for those of you who fall into that category, there's actually a third question that you can ask, and that is how am I going to make the audience feel the way that I want them to feel? Because as some as people who both film and edit, we actually have the ability to plan ahead a little bit more than people who are just doing the editing. So with that being said, let's break down how I answered all three of those questions in the making of Create and Be Happy. I knew that the main feelings that I wanted the audience to feel when watching Create and Be Happy to be hope and inspiration. I wanted to use my passion for creating art as a way to help other people connect with their passion. And also on top of that, I wanted them to feel the gratitude that I feel for the life that I have. So that's the what. What do I want the audience to feel? As far as the how is concerned, I'm a little bit nerdy and I'm a little bit obsessed with psychology. So I knew that the best way to connect my audience with those feelings was through my own nostalgia. So I, what I decided I was going to do was I was going to pull up a bunch of footage from my early YouTube videos, specifically focusing on clips that had other creators in them. So hopefully people could connect that with fond memories, gratitude, and stuff like that. Obviously, I was also going to have to cut in footage from my very first YouTube video as horrible of a video as that was. And since so much of my creative journey revolved around music, I was also going to bring in live footage from my band when I was playing music and also maybe some clips of me playing guitar and, and stuff like that. So that was the, that was the how that's the stuff that I was going to use to make the audience feel that gratitude, that passion, that inspiration, and that hope. By the way, is all this making sense? If it is, give this video a like.
Once I filmed the talking head portion of the video and sat down to edit, I started answering that third question over and over and over again. How is this cut going to affect my audience emotionally? How is cutting to the talking head portion at this point in the video going to make my audience feel? How is the music going to make them feel? How are the sound effects you get the idea. When it was all said and done, I had a video that was able to inspire people and get them excited about their very first project or maybe even their hundredth project. The audience was able to connect with the gratitude that I felt and the passion that I have for creating art. All in all, I would say that video is a success. Now, hopefully that breakdown gave you a little bit of insight into how to cut for emotion. If it did, let me know in the comments. And if it didn't, I guess let me know in the comments. Emotion is just the first of Walter Murch's six rules of editing. If you want to learn about the other five, click this video right here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that will help you become a better video editor, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.